Hi everyone, thank you for joining. Today I'll be talking about human factors engineering. What is human factors engineering? This type of engineering takes into account human strengths and limitations in the design of interactive systems that involve people, tools, technology, and work environments to ensure safety, effectiveness, and ease of use. Let me give you an example. Let's say there is an elderly man in the hospital who experiences cardiac arrest. When the code blue team arrives, they're not able to administer a potentially life-saving shock because the pads of the defibrillator and the defibrillator itself cannot be connected physically. You're probably already aware that there are multiple brands of defibrillators out there that differ in functionality as well as in physical appearance. A typical hospital may have several different models lying around in the building, sometimes even in the same unit. A human factors engineer plays a significant role in optimizing safety and efficiency when it comes to working in a complex system. A human factors engineer examines a particular activity in terms of its various components and also assesses the physical demands, skill demands, dynamics of the team, mental workload, various aspects of the work environment such as lighting, noise, and the design of the device required for the task to be completed safely and efficiently. In essence, human factors engineering focuses on how systems work in actual practice with real and fallible human beings at the controls and attempts to design systems that optimize safety and minimize the risk of error in complex environments. We will now talk about applications of human factors engineering to improving safety. With the human factors engineering approach, several tools and techniques are used to address safety issues. One of them is usability testing. Human factors engineers test new systems and equipment under real world conditions as much as possible in order to identify potential problems and unintended consequences of new technology. One prominent example involves computerized provider order entry and electronic medical records. A recent book discussed a serious medication overdose that was attributed in part to confusing displays in the institution CPOE system. This clearly shows how failing to use human factors engineering principles in user interface design can potentially harm our patients. Another tool that human factors engineering approach uses is forcing functions. What is forcing functions? An aspect of a design that prevents an unintended or undesirable action from being performed or allows its performance only if another specific action is performed first. Forcing functions is used as a tool to improve patient safety. It is built in technology as hard stops. It is an activity that forces the user to take action. If your system forces you to document a timeout before you can document further in the process, then it is called forcing function. For example, if you have already put in anesthesia time, intubation time, the system won't allow you to document incision time until you have documented a timeout. We'll talk about two more tools that human factors engineering uses to improve safety. Standardization. An axiom of human factors engineering is that equipment and processes should be standardized whenever possible in order to increase reliability, improve information flow, and minimize cross-training needs. Standardized processes are increasingly being implemented as safety measures. One of the examples is the widening use of checklist to ensure that safety steps are 
performed in the correct order. Next is resiliency efforts. Since unexpected events are likely to occur, we need to pay attention to their detection and mitigation before they get worse. So resiliency approaches tap into the dynamic aspects of risk management, exploring how organizations anticipate and adapt to changing conditions and recover from system anomalies, rather than focus on error and design efforts to preclude unexpected events. Here you will find reference to the material that was used to create the content of this presentation. I have also included the links to the sources of images that were used in this video in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. See you soon.